Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today I wanted to talk about nitrates. Now nitrates are sometimes overlooked in the aquarium. We tend to be very focused on ammonia and nitrites, but today I want to look at nitrates because they are also extremely important for fish health, so stay tuned. Alright everybody, so I want to talk about five things when it comes to nitrates. Thing number one, what are they? The second thing, where do they come from? The third thing I want to talk about, why are they bad? And then I also want to talk about how do you know if you've got a problem with nitrates and the last thing, what to do to prevent problems. All right, everybody, so we've talked about nitrates before when we were talking about the nitrogen cycle. I will put cards in the upper right-hand corner because we've done videos on the nitrogen cycle, a very in-depth look at the nitrogen cycle. We've talked about ammonia and what to do if ammonia is a problem. We've also talked about nitrites and what to do if nitrates are an issue. We've also talked about water parameters in general. So as this video goes through, we'll put cards in the upper right-hand corner. You can check those out as well. So what are nitrates? Nitrates are the final product of the nitrification process in the nitrogen cycle. So fish secrete ammonia as a waste product. Bacteria convert that ammonia to nitrite. A different type of bacteria converts the nitrite to nitrate. And so now we've got this nitrate, which is NO3, building up in the aquarium. And that's really where the nitrate comes from. Ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. All right, so why are nitrates bad? Now, I think most of us understand that ammonia is really deadly, nitrites are really deadly. Fish, when they're in those environments where ammonia and nitrites are present, they can die pretty quickly. Nitrates to fish are similar to what it'd be like if we human beings were in a smoke-filled room only for a long period of time. So maybe low level nitrates is kind of like, okay, there's a couple people smoking in an enclosed space and it's kind of smoky all the time. It's a little bit irritating. Uh, and maybe over time that might have an impact on your health. Maybe you don't have as much energy. You don't have as much stamina. Maybe your skin doesn't look quite as nice as it should because of the smoke. And the higher the nitrate concentrations go, the more problems there's gonna be, just like if there was more smoke in a room. All right, so now you get a room that's really smoky all the time. Maybe you have trouble breathing. Maybe you have trouble, you don't wanna eat, you feel sick, you're more prone to infections. That's the same thing that can happen to fish if nitrate levels aren't monitored and dealt with appropriately. So what's gonna happen? Long-term effects of nitrate elevation in a fish tank, you might see fish that are listless, maybe they're lethargic, they're not swimming around very much. They may go off feed, they may not reproduce, so if you're into breeding, you've got high nitrate levels, that may inhibit uh, reproduction. Longer term effects of nitrate toxicity, uh, they may start swimming very erratically. Uh, and eventually it could lead to death and certainly a reduced lifespan. So how do you know if you have a problem? Look for those signs. Are your fish not eating? Are they looking tired and not swimming around very much? Uh, are, their, are their colors a little bit off? That may indicate that there's something wrong with water parameters. Now, of course, you should be checking for ammonia and nitrite because the, the toxicity of those two chemicals is much higher than nitrate. But if those two are in line, in other words, they're at zero, look at your nitrate levels. Something else to keep in mind, nitrate concentrations, when you look at the studies, there's two things that can happen. You can have acute toxicity, and those numbers are all over the place uh, in terms of concentration. Anywhere from a few hundred parts per million all the way up to a thousand parts per million can cause acute issues, which means fish are going to die pretty quick unless something changes. The other part of that is chronic issues that happens when nitrate levels are elevated, but not necessarily to the point where you put fish in and all of a sudden they start experiencing problems right away. The chronic problems can happen anywhere from about 40-ish parts per million up to a couple hundred parts per million, again, depending on the fish, depending on the ecosystem. Invertebrates are more sensitive to nitrate concentrations, as are amphibians. Now, for us, we have a master kit, an API master kit. It's a liquid test kit. Uh, it tests for ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, uh, hardness. And I think if you're serious about being in the aquarium hobby, every fish room or if you've got a fish tank, you should probably have one of those. I'm gonna put a link in the description for the API water test kit. Again, it's really good. It's something that we use frequently. Uh, it's an affiliate link, so that'll be below. Take a look at that. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use that test kit real quick, and then we're gonna look at what we can do to prevent nitrates from building up in the first place. All right, everybody, so there's a couple things we're gonna to need to test for nitrate. The API test kits, the liquid test kits come with uh, a test tube, the nice thing is there is a 5 ml line here so you know exactly how much water you have to put in these test tubes. The other thing that you're going to need, there are actually two bottles 
for testing for nitrate bottles a or bottles one and two so you're going to need those as well now the procedure is actually pretty simple all you have to do is take your clean test tube and we're going to dip it in the water here and look at that i pretty much got five mls of water with just one try if there's a little bit too much just kind of tap it until you get exactly what you want so we've got our tube here and then we're going to need bottle number one and for bottle number one I usually like to give it a couple quick shakes here like this you open it by pressing down on this red thing turn the top and then you add in 10 drops from bottle one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so that we've got now got bottle number one there initially it's going to turn yellow or is yellow greenish and then we need bottle number two and so with bottle number two, and I'm not going to show this on camera, you have to shake this thing for 30 seconds. So you just make sure the cap is nice and tight. Just shake it like this, and we'll come back in 30 seconds. Okay, so now that I've been shaking this thing for 30 seconds, uh, we're going to go ahead and drop 10 drops of bottle number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now, now that we've done that, we're going to put the cap back on here like this. Now, we have to recap our tube. And then we have to shake this tube for one minute vigorously. So we'll put the cap on, put our finger over the cap. We'll shake like this pretty hard. We'll come back in a minute and see what we've got. All right, everybody. So this is a little trick that I like to use. I like to put both the answer key and the tube next to an aquarium light. And the nitrate uh, key is on the far right hand side. And it gives me a much better idea of what the tube actually looks like. So that, that I'm not super stressed out or concerned about the exact color. What I'm looking for is, okay, yellow means that we've got no nitrates. Now that might be important if you're just cycling a tank, you don't have any nitrates built up yet. That could actually be a concern. But as we get into the oranges, five to 20 parts per million, that's where I'm feeling pretty comfortable. The tube right here is somewhere between 10 and 20 parts per million. If I were in the reds, then I would probably want to think about my tank maintenance schedule, my water change schedule, because as I go, go from 40 parts per million and above, uh, that's when we really want to be looking at are the water changes that we're doing sufficient but I'm pretty happy here we're somewhere between that 10 and 20 parts per million and that's enough for me to know that we're, we're keeping up with our water changes and our water quality at least in terms of nitrates are still looking pretty good all right so what do you do to prevent high nitrate concentrations from stressing out your fish obviously thing number one test your water we just did a video on water parameters where we made the point that you really can't determine water quality just by looking at it you have to test it now, testing it will help you determine a couple things. One, it will help you determine if your, if your maintenance schedule on your tanks is adequate. So you can test your nitrate levels right after you do a water change. Hopefully that's somewhere in that five to 10 parts per million. And then as you go, maybe if you're, test, if you're water changing once a week, right before you do the water change, test again. If it's 40, 60, 80 parts per million, you know you have to either do more frequent water changes or larger volume water changes. But nitrates will help you determine how often you change your water and the volume that you change. All right, so what else can be done? I think an important thing is, and something that sometimes is overlooked, adding live plants. Live plants help reduce nitrates. They do it one of two ways, either directly or indirectly. Indirectly, what plants do is they will use ammonia that's secreted by the fish as a source of nitrogen they actually, most aquatic plants actually prefer ammonia. So they can use the ammonia, and if there's no ammonia, obviously there's no ammonia to turn into nitrite, there's no nitrite to turn into nitrates, and so therefore the nitrate concentrations are reduced. So one thing we have to understand is the plants, while yes, they will reduce the amount of nitrates indirectly by using the ammonia, they will also do so directly. Plants live in an ecosystem with bacteria, and those bacteria that are in that tank will convert the ammonia to nitrite, and so if the plants are deficient in ammonia, they can always switch to nitrate as a source of nitrogen. It's more energy costly, but they still do it. So plants are important because they will help you lower nitrates, which will reduce either the frequency or the volume of water changes that are necessary. Keeping in mind, nitrates are not the only thing that will accumulate in a tank. The other thing, and this is probably not something a lot of people want to hear, algae. Algae will also reduce the nitrate concentrations, and in fact, it can be a good marker for how much nitrate is in the tank, the concentration. If you've got a lot of algae growth and you're having a really hard time controlling it, chances are there's a lot of nitrates in the tank and so the algae is just flourishing. Now, 
For us in our fish room, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about algae on surfaces on the back of the tank or on the sides. Obviously, I want the viewing panels to be algae free, but a little bit of algae in that tank, it's not necessary. It's not a bad thing and it will reduce nitrates for you. This is going to come as a huge surprise. The one thing that really isn't going to help with nitrate reduction, your filtration. That's right. Your filters really aren't going to help at all. I've seen people who talk about they've got the most awesome system. They've got two canister filters, a hang on back, and three sponge filters, all in a 40 gallon breeder. And their water's awesome and their water quality is fantastic. And it probably looks amazingly crystal clear. Guess what? Don't do water changes in that tank for a few months if it's heavily stocked, and you're still going to have a bunch of dead fish. Why? Because the filtration system harbors bacteria, and that bacteria uses ammonia and nitrites and then produces nitrates, and nothing is removing that from the tank unless you've got plants or algae or you're doing water changes. So filtration isn't going to help you remove the nitrates. All right, everybody, so I hope you found that useful. I'm gonna put all of the information down in the description below, including videos on the nitrogen cycle, ammonia and nitrite toxicity. I will also put that affiliate link in the description below so you can look at that API test kit, see if that's something you're interested in. Again, you should have some way to test for uh, ammonia, nitrite, nitrates, pH, if you're gonna be keeping fish and keeping them healthy. So if you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.